have a few things I came across over the last week that I thought would be worth sharing. All right. Start there like usual. All right. Uh, let's go to your screen then. Perfect. Uh, first thing I wanted to call out is that we're starting starting to uh, seems we're starting to ramp up on the speakers that are being announced for uh, MMS uh, Flamingo Edition coming up in October. Um, also, seeing some fantastic uh, some of the uh, staple uh, attendees being announced as well. Some funny uh, announcements coming out there. Um, but the reason I bring that up is if you're on the fence about whether or not you're going to attend MMS uh, Flamingo Edition in October, uh, please go ahead and uh, browse over to the website and recommend um, signing up before it sells out. Um, I expect it will, like like it did in May. At least I hope it will, as it should. Um, so don't wait too long. I know a number of people that, uh, that did last time and uh, were sad about it, rightfully so. Um, <clears throat> a couple of other things I came across on the technical side of things, a uh, blog post from Peter, Peter Klapvik on getting notifications of missing devices in Windows Update for Business reports. Um, so there was a missing devices feature that was added to Windows Update for Business reports that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. Um, but Peter has a nice write-up here in how you can uh, utilize that data from Log Analytics and build an Azure Logic app to actually notify you of those devices that are missing. Um, so great content here. Uh, if this is something, if you're if you're utilizing Windows Update for business reports um, widely in your organization, which I recommend, I'm a fan of this solution uh, thus far. I would uh, give this a look as well, so you can stay on top of those missing devices, figure out how to get them back in to the reports. Um, I just lost my notes there. There we go, sorry. A uh, couple of other articles I found actually are coming from Microsoft. So uh, this first one here, uh, Lior Bella wrote um, a couple of days ago, and this post just goes through some of the various Intune resources that you can find from Microsoft, how to access them, how to browse through them, um, so a couple of different categories here. This first one is I want to focus on a particular scenario, and this page will guide you to uh, the documentation for that scenario. Uh, we also have some demos here that they've made available and how you can um, basically help your end users here. Uh, so getting the company portal app and trying to communicate that to your users. There were some new... Um, Templates added to the Intune Adoption Kit to help you communicate uh, the use of Intune to your users. So uh, always helpful there where we have some of that done for us already. And then just some additional documentation, uh, the general Microsoft Intune documentation here, and some of the community uh, pages that Microsoft runs also mentioned here. Uh, so recommend checking this out. Keep it bookmarked. This is a... a a number of great resources from Microsoft themselves. And then our friend Harjit over at Microsoft also put together a nice blog post yesterday on um, myths and misconceptions on upgrading to Windows 11. I thought this was a fantastic post. Um, Johan uh, and I have both been talking uh, a lot about upgrading, upgrading to Windows 11. Uh, the clock is now ticking quite rapidly on that uh, on that front. Um, so <clears throat> Harjit goes through a number of those misconceptions that may or may not be uh, preventing your organization from moving forward to Windows 11. Uh, absolutely recommend reading through this. It's a pretty quick read, but uh, Harjit really nails some of the uh, common uh, perceived pain points that I think we're hearing. So thank you for writing this up, Harjit. Um, and we'll get these links uh, uh, posted up on the uh, YouTube channel later today. Um, but that's what I had. Johan, do you have some things as well? I do. Um, first up is, let me share my screen for a second. Uh, 
Here we go. Just a quick announcement, or <laughs> rather a retweet. Uh, Jason Sanders shared that the config refresh is now uh, generally available for GA. And uh, looking forward to try that one out. I haven't had a chance to play around with it much yet, but it does require that you are somewhat updated. So either the second wave of updates from May, or you have to wait until 6B, which is available today until that one becomes deployed in your in your organization, uh, depending on your rings and whatnot. Uh, then I stumbled across another tweet from uh, Lior. Uh, I don't remember if you shared this one before, but I, I haven't seen them before. So I figured I would share it anyway. Uh, they released a like an intro video that in turn led to more videos. Uh, it's a journey to the cloud video series from some of the MVPs and other admins out there that has been basically they're sharing their their journey uh, to Intune. So I highly recommend take a look at these. They were not too long, each of the videos, five, 10 minutes long. So you can go through it at uh, reasonable, uh, reasonably quick at least. And finally, uh, Phil, that uh, Phil Wilcock that works at uh, uh, two pint together with me and a bunch of others. Uh, we uh, released a new blog post this morning that catches up some of the challenges around delivery optimization at the moment. Uh, we have seen an unfortunate trend throughout the entire year, more or less, that peering efficiency has been dropping. Uh, and it turns out that Microsoft is changing a few things uh, on their end, on the new applications that we thought would be uh, obviously peering at content, but they turn out they didn't. And one of these applications is to, maybe not a big surprise, but we had one company we work with where uh, non-peerable content was responsible for about 30 terabytes of uh, over three days. And uh, yeah, it was the new Microsoft Teams clients coming down together with the Teams updates. They can currently not be peered. They can currently not be cached. So uh, that was fun. Could I ask a question? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's allowed. Uh, is that something that uh, providing feedback to Microsoft is helpful to where they enable that content to be peered? I don't know. Okay. Well, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. But it's a lot of data. Yeah, that anyway, is a lot. Yeah. So, so the blog post goes through uh, some more details on content that, that is not peerable at all. And of course, that will drive down content a bit. And we're also working on, on publishing uh, a second part of this blog post around updated guidance for the policies. This the good old guidance is still, still valid, but there are some additional things that you can do uh, to make it even better. And the rumors are that also our friends over at uh, Team Cloudway are working on, on something like this as well to be shared on Friday, if I read. Maurice's uh, tweet correctly there. So okay. that was all I had at the moment. Uh, figured it would be useful to share.